Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Laszlo Montgomery here with another halfway decent Chinese saying for you. And for the second time in a row, I have another good one for you from the great Taoist philosopher Zhuangzi. As with our friend from last time who lived at the bottom of a well, this one comes to us from the outer chapters of Zhuangzi's eponymous book, sometimes referred to as the second book of the Tao. And the story behind today's Chinese saying that I have for you today comes from a chapter of the book entitled Understanding Life, Da Sheng. And before I dive right into the telling of this tale, let's first look at the four characters, Shen Gong, Gui Fu, and break them down into their constituent parts. A Shen is a god, a deity, or some immortal being. Gong means a worker, or a skill. Gui means a ghost or a spirit, and Fu is an axe or a hatchet. God, worker, ghost, axe. That doesn't reveal too much as far as what the meaning is behind these four characters. Now, before I proceed, let me mention, this is one of those cheng yu that you could turn inside out and say it as gui fu shan gong. It works interchangeably with shan gong gui fu. This one comes to us, no surprise here, from the Warring States period, the age in which Zhuangzi himself lived. The chapter entitled Da Sheng contains a series of anecdotes on the theme of understanding life. And our cheng yu for this episode comes from one of these very anecdotes. And the star of this Chinese saying is named Zi Qing, or Craftsman Qing, or Master Qing. And he resided in present-day Shandong province in the state of Lu. And the reason he was known as Zi Qing, or Craftsman, or Master Qing, was because professionally he used to craft wooden stands for ceremonial Chinese bells. And these stands were called a ju. And in ancient times, music was part and parcel of all the rituals and ceremonies carried out in those Zhou Dynasty days. And these ju, or wooden racks to hold all the different tuned bells made by Zi Qing's hands, were so delicately carved and intricately crafted that when people saw them, they exclaimed, This must be the work of some god or spirit. Shen Gong, Gui Fu. One day, one of these Ju was brought to the royal palace of the king of Lu, and he was so astonished by its beauty that he summoned craftsman Ching and asked him straight out, By what magical power have you made this? Craftsman Ching replied, Oh, I'm merely an artisan, not a magician. Nonetheless... I have one special skill. Whenever I'm about to make a ju, I'm very careful to conserve my energy and thought process. Before beginning my work, I fast in order to quiet my mind and calm my thoughts. After three days of fasting, I think no more of whether my work will be famous or celebrated or what sorts of monetary rewards or grand titles I will receive from my art. After five days of fasting... I wonder no longer about whether my work will turn out clumsy or elaborate, or what kinds of criticism, good or bad, its viewers will direct at it. After seven days of fasting, my mind disconnects completely from my body. I feel formless and forget even that I have limbs. This is when I know that time is right to begin my work. With thoughts of the imperial court and outside distractions utterly banished from my mind, I am free to focus on nothing but my craft. In this state, I enter the forest and observe the natural materials all around me. When I find a suitable piece of wood, of about the right shape and size for a chi, I can envision the finished product in my mind. Now all I have to do is take the wood home and add the finishing touches until the chi I envisioned emerges from the piece of wood retrieved from the forest. And if at any point... This process is disturbed or polluted. I quit immediately. So the ju that I make always comes from a state of mind that is in perfect harmony with nature. And perhaps for this reason, people see my carving and artistic endeavors and believe them to be supernatural. So, using all the modesty of a gentleman craftsman, Zi Qing explained that it's only because he communes with the forces of nature that people behold his craftsmanship and believe it to be made by the hands of the gods or great spirits. 
You use this idiom to describe something that is so beautifully made that it looks as if it were crafted by a supernatural being, a work of art in a museum or a mechanical device or anything that is crafted and made in such a way that it is astonishing in its detail and perfection. And you could use this term as either a noun or an adjective. You can even ascribe this Chengyu to great technological marvels. The Large Hadron Collider, the Webb Telescope, the Tianwen-1 Mars spacecraft. These, too, can be Shen Gong, Gui Fu. Again, you have the option to say this as Gui Fu, Shen Gong. Both versions of this idiom work all over China. I have it on good authority. So that's all I have for you this time. In and out, just a quickie for you. A versatile Chinese cheng yu, gifted to us from Zhuangzi himself, that you can use to exclaim when something you behold that is made by us humans appears so incredible and amazing in its construct, you can't believe it was not made by gods. And with that, I will leave you for now. Emma, once again, being as indispensable as always, helping behind the scenes, doing all the heavy lifting so that I could... Get these episodes out to you in a regular and timely manner. Thanks, Emma. This is Laszlo Montgomery once again signing off from lovely Los Angeles here in the state of California, wishing you well and beseeching you to consider coming back next time for another useful and thought-provoking episode of the Chinese Sayings Podcast.